Hello and welcome to the latest of these Survey Tech webinars on every aspect of construction and surveying technology. Um, we're still having a few people filtering in, so um, I just uh, take this opportunity to thank you for uh, joining us and, um, and also to point you towards the other webinars in this series. So we've already done three webinars about digital twin technology in association with Matterport. Um, uh, the first one, it was all about how to create your first digital twin. The second one was how to use it. And then the third one, we really uh, did a bit of a deep dive into laser scanning with um, GeoSlam and, and Leica and Matterport. So they're all up on YouTube if you want to catch up on them. Um, and uh, I should also say that these webinars at the moment have been monthly and we'll be doing another one at the end of next month. So uh, we hope you can, can join for that one. That'll be on um, uh, structural health monitoring and we'll be uh, joined by uh, people from ProSec who do uh, ground penetrating radar, um, uh, someone from Move Solutions who do uh, remote monitoring sensors and uh, we'll have a demonstration from GMAX uh, doing total station monitoring. So that's um, the webinar housekeeping. The other thing to say is that if uh, you have a question, um, please do write it into the little box. This is very much uh, a, an open discussion that we, we'd like to, to allow people to ask those, those questions that they've always wondered. And um, we've got a great uh, panel with us today. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, uh, we're still waiting on Paul Tui from Flannery's. Um, he uh, has messaged me saying he's, he's uh, in a, a bit of a, an operations bind. And I, I guess, you know, this is one of the lessons about machine control is that it's not just about fitting it and, and, and leaving it. Um, it's, it's a technology that has to be supported. And, um, and, and Paul obviously has to, to look at that. Um, first line of support in 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 his role so um, uh, if he can join later um, that'll be great but if not we still have a, a fantastic uh, couple of viewpoints um, so initially I'm just going to introduce you and um, allow my guests to to give a brief uh, introduction to themselves so first of all uh, we have Pat Quinn from P Quinn Construction and we also have Eason Eklas from uh, from uni control um so pat uh, if you could just um uh, tell us briefly about how you, what what you do in your role and and maybe how you you came to uh, machine control yeah so i'm patrick quinn i'm the um operations director and uh lead shaper for p quinn construction um we are a golf course construction specialists and um, yeah, it's recent, uh, the last two, three years, we've really been going into uh, machine control for shaping golf courses. Um, so yeah, we started like looking at um, GPS around 2021. Um, we actually had one um, on a golf course in the Midlands um, it was on a on a dozer. It was a Trimble um, system. Um, we was toying with the idea about it, um, and it actually actually worked. We we started shaping a golf course with the Trimble Earthworks um, in the auto mode. So literally, I was in the dozer. I press auto, and it would do it all for me. Um, in the golfing world, there is so many contours. Um, so many lines uh, that the architect will come up with. Um, everyone was kind of doubting the idea because we didn't re we didn't know if the the dozer was going to keep up with the actual line movement. Um, but it did. It actually uh, it actually paid off, and um, so we hired that one in 2021, and then um, in 2022 we. Uh, built another golf course and we actually hired in three dozers all with GPS machine control and um, the project was meant to be uh, 20 weeks and we actually done it in 14 weeks 
and that was just purely down to machine control and GPS. Um, we wouldn't have done it in that time frame without it. Um, so, as you can imagine, the client was uh, over the moon doing it six weeks early. We was um, we was able to off hire the machinery six weeks early, um, so our profit margin went up by what thirty percent. Um, so three dozers got off hired six weeks early. Uh, the dump trucks got off hired, and uh, the large excavator got off hired. Um, so you can imagine the, the cost saving just by having them three dozers with machine control and GPS. Um, if we didn't have if we didn't have the, the machine control on the dozers, we would have we would have done it in the twenty weeks. Um, but we decided to go with with the dozer with the machine control just to see if it would you know help and work and yeah. I can I can say that it did, um, and we haven't we haven't looked back since. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good thing. And um, you've just invested in your second uh, excavator machine control um, from from that experience, and and I think we're going to be uh, getting some videos of what it looks like, you know, behind the levers. Um, so that that's brilliant. Um, uh, and uh, Eason, if you could just briefly uh, introduce yourself and your sort of uh, journey in, in machine control. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Um, so, hey, guys, I, well, I can't see you, so but uh, nice to meet you all, all right, virtually. Um, but my name is Eason. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Unicontrol, and uh, today I have all the commercial responsibility. Um, my background is actually in engineering, uh, so... I finished my engineering degree in Denmark, and afterwards, I um, I've been involved with a lot of different kind of startups, uh, starting from all the the aspect of of web shops and running that, and, and the digital um, marketing within that, sales and supply chain and everything within that, and then afterwards, I was involved in the healthcare um, industry, which is a little bit harder uh, to work with, um, but I think in in 2018, um, in the end of the 2018, I met two guys, Casper Spignip had experience with machine control and um, you know we kind of like met each other and then we started we thought they had the experience in the market and I had a commercial perspective on it um, at least a commercial drive and, uh, and I got the commercial perspective afterwards and then we decided to do something together um, so no background in machine control in in, in, in the whole this earth moving industry um, but the fun part of that is that actually my dad was a a tractor mechanic and, and my mom she studied geology and one work with cartography and so on so here today i can see back and say well this is a good mixture and when i'm working with machine control so that's that's kind of nice um so today just to tell you a little bit about uni control um i have a couple slides maybe i can start sharing well, um, i think um uh, shall i do my presentation very briefly yeah please do that um Matt. and then um and then we'll we'll, we'll follow up with uh, you and then Pat. Um, yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for for joining us, Ethan, and uh, extra points for joining us from an actual digger uh, in the Czech Republic. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think that that's that's a commitment level that that um, I'm very pleased to see. Um, that's good to so, hear. Yeah, I'm um, I'm now showing my screen. Um, presumably you can see that. Uh, there we go. Ah, there we go. Show my screen. Good. Um, and now you can see uh, machine control making it easier and safer to dig a hole, which is something I nicked from Unicontrol. So thanks, guys. Um, so. Um, just briefly, here's a, a little bit of background on um, the evolution of surveying from uh, the 1970s to, to present. Um, that is uh, my father who set up SurveyTech um, out in Nigeria using what was then the latest uh, technology to survey a road. Um, 
it was extremely time consuming, uh, required uh, very high level maths, and I'm sure wasn't really right most of the time. Um, and now, you know, up to present day, uh, here he is, uh, not looking that much older, <laughs> um, with me um, uh, using a, a GNSS receiver. And in the middle is an astrolabe, um, which w if you've uh, if you've ever looked at the flag of Portugal, actually features on the flag because during the age of discovery, that's what they were using to navigate. Um, and it's a similar s sort of theory to to what we're using today with with GNSS. You know, it, they were looking at the stars and getting a um, as good a, a, a an idea of their position as possible then. Um, now we're using satellites um, and we're getting a much more uh, uh, a, a much more accurate picture of, of where we actually are. Um, here's just some some terminology um, to, to discuss initially. Now I think um, uh, one thing I've always wanted with these webinars is to make them accessible to anyone. So um, uh, I wanted to, to put these terms out initially. Um, so machine control, I think in, in some ways, um, would more correctly be called machine guidance because th there's actually a machine control where you can have it fully autonomous, but it was brought to the market as machine control and that's basically what everyone um, calls it. But effectively what we mean is we're integrating surveying uh, technology into earth moving. Um, uh, GNSS and GPS, they're often used a bit interchangeably. Um, it's a bit like the way uh, we call vacuum cleaners hoovers. Just because GPS was up there first, um, we often still use uh, GPS. Um, and then there's a difference between 2D and 3D machine control. With 2D machine control, um, the operator gets a, a reading to, to help them work to their level. And that generally means that they set up a rotating laser to um to to give them that 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 baseline to work from um whereas in 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 true 3d uh machine control the operator can just drive into a field they've got a map in front of them they know where and how to dig um and then the last two are uh, two standard drawing formats um and uh they are very easily up uploaded in into basically every machine control and i think uh, and and indeed uh, all surveying equipment um and i think one of the messages i i'd like to put out today is that interoperability you know i think th there has been a history with some surveying equipment of trying to tie people in uh through putting it out in one file format or another and 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 frankly it's self defeating um there are mutual formats that work with everything and i think they should be used um, by everyone really um, and here's just a quick pick there's uh, uh, Pat's machine uh, where we uh, fitted machine control we've got a couple of GNSS receivers on the back and then the sensors uh, moving up up the arm um, and that of course gives Pat the uh, the position and we'll go into that a bit later um, the other thing to say is that the GNSS receivers on their own aren't enough. You need a, a correction based on uh, uh, positions, either uh, a, a, a singular base and rover setup or a, a network such as uh, SmartNet, GeoNet, uh, premium positioning. Uh, the, the list is, you know, um, uh, is fairly long, but um, in Britain at least, most people are using ordnance survey data. Um, and this is something that we'll provide along with the installation, but it, it, you know, it's something to be aware of that to get that really accurate position, it's not just the receivers, there's also uh, corrections coming in. And then there's some, uh, some pretty clever maths going on um, because the earth uh, isn't a perfect sphere. It's a shape known as a, a, a geoid, um, which effectively means earth shaped. And so the calculations are based on that, which which means that the um, elevation data is is a little bit more more difficult. So you know that that 
20 mil is uh is is more like what you'll get whereas a, a, you know with a total station you'll you'll bring it down to a, a couple of mil um and it's not just gps in the sky anymore um the these are the the satellites um uh, from the four main ones that we we would use galileo european baidu is is chinese and 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 glonass is 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 russian um and unit control uses all four constellations so it means you you're going to get a, a quicker more accurate fix particularly for us in europe galileo gives you much better elevation data and a quicker fix we we've been selling surveying equipment for a long time and, and we know that that that, that is a, a real benefit um and then um really just to say that this is just one technology that we offer um at, at Survey Tech, we we our mission is 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 to try and help people to to work better and more safely, um, and use the technology that exists to do so, and as well as that to integrate it between the different brands and things that we offer. So we we love to solve problems for you, and um, if you've got questions about you know uh, bringing drone data in and what software route that that's absolutely what what we can help you um help you with um james our new head of machine control um you know he's spent many years in the field as a surveyor he trained at it in uni at university and he's, he's just recently joined us from murphy's geospatial so you know um he'll be able to guide you through every single aspect of it it uh, what we're offering is not just an installation it it it's a, a really holistic problem solving um with, with a range of technology um and and we we work on a uh you know a, a consultative basis to to try and help you find the the best solution um with that said um i think it's important to keep things simple and isaac newton uh agrees with me so ultimately it's it's a screen in in your cab that helps you know where and 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 how to dig and that it is the best thing about machine control. It's simple and it, it's easy to use. If you'd like to find out more, we uh, we obviously are, we're on all the social media um, platforms um, and particularly uh, YouTube, where we have a lovely video with Pat, where we explain uh, machine control and we and we show various different viewpoints from drones and cameras and um, uh, and yeah, really go through it. So that is it from me. Um, hopefully that was just a, a bit of a whistle stop tour. Um, I'm gonna pass over now to Eason. Um, Eason, I'm just uh, making you the presenter. Um, and uh, hopefully you can go into a, a, a bit more about some of the solutions that you offer um, with, uh, with Unicontrol. Yeah, of course. Thank you for... Uh... A nice presentation i think uh, at least i think a lot of people now knows what we're talking about and uh, gives a good ground um to all of this here but you should be able to see my uh, screen now right yes we can yeah yeah good so i think uh, i i jumped a little bit faster in the start but a little bit on, on uh, what matt have been building up and what machine control is and uh, and why we started and, and who is Unicontrol and what kind of flair are we in the market and what we are maybe doing a little bit different. Uh, generally, Unicontrol, you can say, is, is quite a young company compared to um, uh, compared to a lot of the others. Uh, Unicontrol was established back in uh, December 2018. Um, you can say, well, in, uh, I normally say in, in 2019. And, and what we have as a motto or, or, or what we really want to do is unit control, this machine control made simple. And, and that focus is in all aspects. And I think uh, what you said, Matt, earlier a little bit on that, uh, traditionally machine control have been putting surveying equipments on the excavators or on the whatever other heavy machinery that you have. And um, a lot of times the surveyors have a have, uh, ha have been educated in exactly using those instruments for a couple of years. It's not just something you pick up from day one. And we have the, we saw that as a challenge in here in this industry because at the end of the day, machine control should be a simple 
as a hammer to use. It's, it's a tool, so the complexity should be removed. So that's why we started the company, and that's why machine control is, is built for the operators. We want to make it safe as well, uh, as you were on to as well. Um, so just a little bit of my introduction to it. But the key principles that we used when we started Union Control and why we are here is that one aspect is we wanted to make easy and safe to dig a hole, but in, in doing so, we want to keep it simple. So once again, it's the operator who's sitting in the uh, in the machine that should be able to use it. A lot of times you see it's happening that you know you get a course on the on what machine control is, and, and you know there's a lot of buttons and be hidden behind menus and so on. And then when you just want to use that function or feature again, it's not that simple anymore. So we want to do that, and it's not just for our customers, but that's also for our distributors. You guys are mad, and 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 the support and whatever we want to give, um, and and that just aligns quite good with our customer first, customer first perspective or or the way we are looking into it, which basically means that when we started our machine control or our journey within this product and in this uh, this sector, uh, we wanted to build something for the operator, and that. Just goes back to what I said a little bit earlier in terms of that we don't want to build a, a surveying interface, let's put it that way. We want to build which is something simple and easy to work with and and so on. So that that is some of the ground stones for some of the uh, fundamental aspects or principles that Unity Control have been built on, um, which I think have been quite a good way of looking into it and also looking into the market. Um, yeah, let's see. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about our journey uh, on, on where the idea began. And, and, you know, December 18, um, cast perspective and I, you can see it in the first picture. So so we started this project here together. Um, and both Casper and Spigniff had uh, experience from the field. And, and and we came in here and saw, okay, that there was a need for, for a simple solution for the market. Um, we launched the product officially in, in Denmark in September 2019. Um, and, and we did that with one of the local dealers who had a good place. And so that helped us quite a lot in getting it here, but the re, uh, to, to really launch the product and showcase the product. And, and within that development process, all that, and before even launching that, we enrolled construction companies in our development. We went down and had a talk with them. What is working? What is not working? And, and what would you like and what, what would you like to have and what would you not like to have and so on. So it's all based on that aspect and we still wanted to keep it simple because there's a lot of complexity in this world and and a lot of ways if you can filter the noise um, that is hindering you to do your job and if we can hinder that in any way then I think we stand in a better place. Um, and when we started Unique Control we also knew that you know we are quite ambitious and we want to to sell the product through around the world as well and just not in Denmark. Denmark is a small market um, it's a good market to start out and they use excavators I think just generally in Scandinavia way different than is done around other places in the world especially compared to the US market probably. Um, so we wanted to have a, a global outreach and so for that we knew that we needed some external capital and so on so we got two business angels or investments on board in May 2020 uh, who have uh, who had the experience from automation and robotics industry and so on. Uh, where we are placed, Odense is, is in the middle of Denmark and, and we really want to push it like from the city and the government aspect as well in that city is that we really want to push that as an automation hub, um, which gives um, a lot of good opportunities and good talent within that region as well. So there's a lot of good robotics companies coming out there as well. So it's just kind of like blends in and timing wise, uh, so quite good. So we didn't sell outside of Denmark um, until, I mean, until 2020, we also sold only in Denmark. And in uh, 2021, we started in our international expansion. So we uh, we went to two uh, international markets. We went to Poland and we went to Sweden and, uh, and then went from there on. So just alone in 2021, we expanded to 14 countries. Um, and the reason we could do so is that we had a challenge when we went into the first two markets. So we went in there and we saw that you know, the Polish guys and the Swedish guy used machine control way different than what we did in Denmark. And, um, and that kind of like gives you an understanding, okay, so why have such systems become so, um, let's put it, so, so complex? And the reason is that 
once you build a feature, once you build a functionality, then you still want it to be fitted to local need. But if I make something for Denmark and I push that out to Sweden or, or, or Poland, they may not need it. So we really went and thought about it. How can we do, how can we build this in a way which still keeps simple? And, and we found an ingenious way. And I think we have this mass customization aspect that we are winning. So that means that our system doesn't look the same in the different countries. That's based on what the distributor thinks and believes is the, the way for the market to work. And they can always adapt and change that to the level of the operators as well. So we expanded in 2021 to 14 countries. Uh, we launched some other solutions. We started with the excavators, but now we have, we launched a wheel loader solution. And uh, in 2022, we were, uh, during the 2020s, in the end of the 2022, we went to over 20, 35 people and we launched a robot solution. We have our, our own cloud solution. Today, we are more in than 25 markets and have over 13, 1400 solutions running uh, around those countries or markets. And, uh, and if you guys have any questions or anything also now, I think you can, you can put that in and, and we can talk about it a little bit later on as well. Um, but yeah, Let's see, so just, just some of the markets that, that we are supporting working. And I think in a lot of the European countries, we have a, a good position. And, and I think in Australia, New Zealand as well. And, and this year for us is that we want to start, um, to start our journey in the North American market as well. So we're also going to be at Con Expo this year. So if you guys are visiting, feel free to come by at our booth. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, at least we had a lot of fun when it was Baum as well. And then um, um, we'll so be at Plantworks for the, uh, for the UK uh, yeah. market. So so please do pop by there. We'll we'll have an excavator with um, with uni control on it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, no problem. I think, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you get these opportunities to, you know, Matt, you can really showcase the product, right? And I, I urge all of you that, that are here today to just go in when you are there and have a chat with Matt. I think they will be, they will offer something unique for you guys. And it's quite important when we set up distributors that we get the right distributors who can support the end customers in the right way. Um, so, yeah, and, and they've been doing quite a good job. Um, so I know, as, as I told you earlier, we have the excavator solution and we have the wheel loader, which we launched, which also in combining these two, you get a full backhoe solution. Um, and for excavators, I mean, we're supporting all the different joists. If you have a dual boom or a swing boom, um, all the different tilt rotators and, and, and wheeled and tracked excavators and, and wheel loaders and whatever it is. It is. And last year, we also launched our grading control for graders and skistiers and uh, our rover solution as well to just uh, work with the whole fleet of it. So Matt, next time you're getting, uh, sorry, Patrick, but next time you're getting a uh, dozer, uh, then you know where to go as well for the machine control solution. I've already asked, I've already asked, don't worry. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> um, but then again, I mean, for those who haven't been here, so why do you need to add machine control to your, to your right moving machinery and a lot of aspect is that 60% uh, of the waste time and in and, and the construction sector is uh, is waiting um, and a lot of these times is because you wait and if you don't have a machine control solution maybe you wait for for the guy on the ground to let you know if you have dig deep enough or maybe you have already dig deep enough so now you have to refill the area again um, so you're using a lot of resources on that, and then, then you get a surveyor out to document what you're doing. And uh, and if you're going on a site and you don't have uh, the drawings or, or whatever there is, uh, then then you need to get a surveyor out. You print everything. Everything is in, in, in physical format. It costs you a lot. So one thing is that you can lower the operating costs, right? And that and and having the drawings inside the cabin uh, where the operator is working, and you know exactly how deep to dig, and and at the same time you uh, you don't i mean you you document the work that you're doing then it improves your productivity and if you're looking globally and i think this is kind of and an, a global perspective is that when you look into construction companies a lot of times the um there is a quite a good turnover but at the end of the year and the bottom there's two to three percent um so it is something that is in real focus and that's a global perspective that digitization and efficiency is big topics. And then the other aspect is that you need skilled operators. There are not a lot of those uh, there anymore. So you need to up-level the ones you have and you can do it with such a solution. And the last but not least is also that you, 
you give them the in independence that you know an operator can go out on the side and, and then he can make a parking lot and everything else without the help from a surveyor. You can make it simple and easy for him to know how to work with it. And he can document it, he can showcase to, to the customer where everything is and, and, and he gets his bills paid. Um, and then of course is, is the rework aspect. I mean, you uh, if you hit the, the levels right the first time, then you don't have to do the second time as well. Um, just a little bit about our user interface. As, as I told you earlier, it's always been developed together with operators. So in the, in the top part, you can see that there is, that is the cut fill value areas and you can change that to what you need. When you swipe to right and left, you see different views. You can use two fingers to zoom in, zoom out, move, and you can see it in 3D with three fingers. On the right panel, you have six buttons and all these buttons have two functionalities. Either you push them and hold down, and with this, you have everything that the operator actually needs within his everyday is within the tip of your finger. So it's very user-friendly user when we're talking. And I think a lot of people have really hit on, uh, really like it. And, and I don't think we have had a lot of customers, um, many customers, at least not that I know, that they, when they bought the first one, they didn't buy a second solution. And one aspect, of course, is the user-friendliness, and it's easier for the operators to work with it. Um, and the training is easy and easy to start and work with it, but it's also customizable. So you can sit in the machine and maybe you have uh, an operator who have just started with this, shit, then you can really create an easy interface for him to work with while you have an operator who have been working for 20 years or 10 years, whatever there is, you can make a more complex interface where he can do more complex jobs. So it, it just also follows the level of the operator's construction company. And, and it's based on an Android tablet. So, I mean, we have a different way of giving support. I mean, we have a whole analytics and the aspect of it. So based on that, you can actually see if a cable is broken. And so that means that Matt uh, can sit in the office and, and when someone calls him in, he can go in and see analytics and say, okay, uh, with 98% uh, accuracy, I know that the problem is this. So when you, he goes out to the office, or sorry, to the machine, he knows what to do rather than finding the problem over there. And, and and the same other way around. And if he knows it's just, just a small thing, he can call up, can you please do this? And then he's up and running. The downtime is a very important aspect with this year as well. Um, I think uh, Matt showed a little bit of this. I mean, we are using the same hardware platform across all of our solutions. Uh, so we have IMU sensors and all the movable parts. So it's working with gravity and acceleration and so on. We have the receivers and we have the antennas and of course the Wi-Fi route as well. And what it does is basically every time you move the machine, the, the screen also moves. And when you have the drawings, you know exactly where to be. Um, so it's the same setup through all the all the all the wheel of the machine as well. A little bit aspect with the wheel of it is that we also have a solution for the articulated body, and you can have the antennas on on top um, uh, on the cap on the cabin. A lot of times, I mean, maybe um, you can see that. Dozers are sorry. Let's put it. The graders are quite, uh, quite expensive and running. Um, also, with machine control and all these things. Uh, and a lot of sites, when I see it, they have wheel loaders available. Uh, so if you have a 3D solution on your wheel loader, it's actually one of this one of the unique machine where it can go out, bring its own material, and at the same time grade it, and have a quite a very fast pace. So if you have a site with two, three graders, I think uh, two graders, you can do the rough grading with, an, with a wheel loader and do the, uh, uh, the, the grading with the grading machine, the end grading or the final finish. So that way you're actually saving quite a lot of money in terms of that, but not a lot of people are thinking of it that way. We have the backhoe solution is again, one solution fit in, in, in both systems. Um, sorry, it's two systems and one in a way, so you can use the front. Uh, front bucket and you can use the digging part and just by changing the bucket so it works in both ways so that's quite cool as well um those are indicates that at the moment is a uh, is for mass and so on and it's working quite nice we have attachment for skid steers um as well as it's using the same platform as you have seen so it's quite familiar we have our cloud solution unfortunately i don't have any pictures of that um and then of course we launched our robo solution which uh, which is going to be kind of a base and robo solution that you guys talked about also matt um, is that it's based on the same platform. So you can actually go out and take the rover, go out and make the drawings and then instantly put it in the machine. So you don't even need to do transfer because they're on the same project in the cloud and so on, which is uh, quite nice and easy to work with. Um, again, it's, it's, it's the same aspect uh, was as the machine control solutions. 
It's built up by the same. You have an active antenna and would have also radio inclusive, including that antenna. And there is also the receiver and all the four constellations and the tablet. And, and when it runs through the same cloud, you can share data instantly. You can document it and share it with multiple machines as well. So yeah, I think I think that was just a little bit from my side on what machine control is. Um, and what we are doing a little bit different in unit control. So I think all in all, you can say that we really have a focus on, on what the operator needs. A lot of times we see people as, uh, I mean, what Servitech is doing and, and the knowledge that they have. And also uh, Patrick here is that we actually take their perspective serious and we try to implement that. So it's easier for them to work with our solutions. Yeah, I think that's um, that's really great. Um, Eason, and it's um, it's a good. Uh, it's I mean, it's amazing what you've done since 2019 to create it, and I think that perspective of building it from the operator uh, to make it as user friendly as possible is it, it has paid dividends. Um, so, speaking of the operator's perspective, uh, Mr. Patrick Quinn, I'm going to make you the presenter, um, and I think you're going to treat us to some of uh, your uh, operator's perspective. It's worth saying that um, if, if you like this, uh, Pat has uh, over 29,000 followers on Instagram, uh, where you can catch up with this every day. If <laughs> get, your, get your Pat fix, <laughs> over to you. Um, so basically I've got um, two machines now with uh, unit control on. Um, we got our first install in um, August uh, last year. Um, yeah, we have we haven't looked back since. Um, so the last few days, I've just uh, done a couple of videos uh, just to show you guys how easy it is for me to work with Uni Control. Um, so also a couple of weeks ago, we had our new um, one three five Hitachi delivered and. Within a couple of days, we had Uni Control out, uh, well, Survey took out um, doing the install for um, the new Uni Control system. Um, so that's that's on one of our other sites. That's all up and running now. Um, our operator Brian, he he absolutely loves it. Um, so yeah, here's a here's a little video of um, you know what I get up to in the day to day of things. So that's the uh, unit control screen, the tablet. As you can see, I'm um, zooming in onto a bunker and that's the bunker there. So the black spray lines, I've actually um, put the corner of the bucket on the actual sand line and I've sprayed it out. So I've not needed to get um, an engineer out to mark out the sand line. Um, I've literally um, done it myself. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of contour lines, um, but the uni control um, it was that easy. It took me five minutes to, to mark out that bunker. And then to the right of that bunker, there's a green complex. Um, so that was, uh, that was shaped up in about four hours. Um, and for an average golf course shape, it'll take between a day and a day and a half. So this whole complex here that I'm going around now, that took probably two days max to do. Um, so I've saved myself a week's work just because I had um, unit control, well, machine control. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I get up to on the on the day to day side of things. Um, but yeah, it, it's I can't beat it. Um, so there's there's another area now that I'm just gone on to. So that's um, a T on uh, I think it's the fifth hole. Um, so yeah, I can zoom in. Um, there you go. So I'll zoom in. Can zoom out. I'm actually, I, I can actually choose the edge of my uh, T area. So I locked onto that. So I made sure I was um, bang on with my levels. Um, yeah, 
and well you can see how you can see how easy it is to use um so i can actually go to the other area. <clears throat> i can go to the other areas as well um, so that's the green um, bunker that i've literally just shown you um so yeah it's it's something something counts it's one of the best uh best i've seen out there and i've i've, I've used all the others before um but yeah this is this is one of the reasons why we've we've chose um, unit control, just because of how simple it is, and yeah, I can't beat it. You weren't lying about having lots of contours um, in <laughs> in golf course. Um, we've got a, a question in um, that I think is directed to you. Um, it's how how difficult is it uh, to get used to looking at the screen whilst you work? Or do you uh, I, see? Well, well, that's the question. The way, you know, the way I worked it, obviously, um, when you level, it gives you a, a, a beep. Obviously, there's a beep to say when you're on your mark. Um, I just have that beep like halfway. I don't have it too loud. Um, so basically, I started off looking at the screen and not looking at my bucket, but then. Um, that kind of goes out the window and you, you end up not looking at the screen, you concentrate on the bucket and then the beeping kind of comes into play. Um, so by the end of it, I wasn't concentrating too much on the screen. I was concentrating more on the bucket and the beeping. And then every so often I'd be looking at the screen. So just to make sure that, you know, everything's fine. Um, but also as well, the screen position is literally the turn of an eye. So the way the position of the screen is in the cab, it's it's one one look and then I'm back to the bucket. So it doesn't actually it doesn't actually affect that much on um, on the control of the bucket. Because if you're if you're keeping your eye on the screen too much, then you're losing control of your bucket. You know what I mean? Um, so I think a, a couple of hours. Uh, I said to I said to the other operator, a couple of hours. I had it sussed, and that was the. And that's what I liked about it, of how simple it was. It took me like two hours to kind of master it. If you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, it's 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 good on the screen. I, I really like it. I really like the tablet. I really like the screen. And I can get out. I can get out of the cab with my screen, and walk around and make sure you know things are done right. I, it's not fixed into my cab, and that was another thing that was a uh, that I really like. I can I can literally walk around the job as if I'm the engineer with with my tablet. You know what I mean? I don't like I'm putting engineers out of a job here, but I don't. You don't need an engineer on site. I don't need one anymore. I only need them at the start of the, the project just to set up and then yeah off you go <laughs> well you know th there's a big skill shortage um in the uk at the moment and it's one of the things um holding back our productivity so you know being able to do more with technology and not necessarily have to call out an engineer every time um means that you're not not being held up so you know it's um it, it's uh, it, it's about using your um uh, your people better as well um uh, next question uh i think it looks like it's for eason um do you have plans sure. for other kinds of machines could you put this on a piling rig could you put machine control on hey, a piling rig eason <laughs> no not yet let's let's not put it yet. that way so there is some request um in terms of that but i think being a young company is also a, a business decision i mean for engineers and for me it will be fun to put it on on almost everything um but it is also in a, in a, in a business perspective on, on when and what timing is right um so right now i think uh, a lot of focus is on i mean we have almost all the earth moving machinery in place um, and and we see in the future that something like semi-automatic and automatics is is the way to go to even help uh, the contractors and the operators be more efficient at the same time don't give them the same 
constraints that they have on their work and make it easier for them. So that's something that we have heavy focus on and, and we are going forward with that as well. Um, but I'm not going to say no. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. And um, this, I think, is probably a bit of a question for for both is what what issues do do people face in implementing this this tech you know is is there i i from my perspective i i have to say you know we've we've been having to support uh, pat less so but some of our other customers with drawing preparation um and you know to to an engineer that is used to using cad it's it's not outside of their skill set and I, I guess to your point, Pat, about um, putting an engineer out of the job, you really do need someone to prepare the drawings, whether it is someone who does that the whole time or, or your site engineer. But um, I think uh, having everything in um, in national grid rather than a, a local drawing um, and things like that, um, we have found that we, that's something we've been supporting people with. Um, I, and I'd be interested in in both of your perspectives. Maybe we'll start with Pat. Yeah, so obviously in the golf uh, construction world, we have um, architects. So the architects are they obviously do the drawings, they do all the CAD work. So for me, of I have no issue because uh, the architect has to do the drawings, he has to do all the models, he has to do all the CAD work, and then it's simply going from the architect spec to an engineer uploading uploading the drawings into the unit control screen. Um, obviously, um, I've got Matt from Servitech uh, with a massive support on, um, on uploading them drawings and, and doing all that kind of work. Um, so from my point of view, um, I've not got that issue because th there's an architect from day one doing doing all the legwork with the drawings so i just get the um i just get the model and it, and it gets uploaded into the into the unit control so and um we've actually got just had another question that follows on from this for you it's um what's the process from uh getting to a new golf course site to being ready to dig so i think you 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 touched on that there but if if you could just talk us through it that'd be um interesting yeah, so obviously, as I said, there's a, the architect will come up with um, he'll come up with all the drawings. Um, he will propose and you know present um, what he thinks um, should happen on the drawings on the architect, um, and then they will do like a survey of the whole. Just say there's a, a farmer's fields where we're going to build a golf course. There'll be obviously um, they'll survey the whole play all the levels and but that that again that goes back to the architect um so he'll do all the um surveying checks and all the heights and everything like that um and they will literally go from from the architect straight to us straight into unit controls screen um and for for me that's that's just, that's how simple it is um as long as we've got the um the survey and, and the architect's drawings then um you can't we can't go wrong with it um and uh, so, another question just come in is um uploading is maybe, done manually no remote yes. access C can you extract as built data from the system um and uh, uh well first of all i say uh, no you you could absolutely uh, send it that that's what the uh unit control cloud is about um it's uh yeah you know with some older systems you, you're messing around with usb sticks whereas this it just pops into the cab um isa maybe you could um uh talk about yeah. the as built data and the um uh sure. uploading of your so maybe i can just talk a little bit about the support aspect what, what is the hardest part about starting with this here i think um the aspect of this is either you do it now or you're not doing it. I mean, the, just when you're looking into the future, a couple of years, I mean, when you look into governments, you have to start with this because they require the documentation level, that's your safety level, um, and it's coming. So so one aspect of this is, is kind of like, I mean, if 
I, we see it in Denmark and we see it in some other places that if you want to bid on bigger, bigger construction jobs, they ask you to have a GPS. And that's mandatory because the whole construction side is, is based on GPS. So, so just to put it there, that this is something that's going to come. And, um, and what we have done is a little bit different is try to make it easy. But a lot of times when, when, when the smaller guy starts up with here, he may get a little bit overwhelmed with the level, with the level of technology and something that he can do. So, so it is like getting them started with a small pack of it and what it can do and then build them up over time. Um, and, and a lot of times is that uh, maybe some of the operators are afraid of the technology that is there and, and we have put that on an Android tablet. So it's not that different. You cannot do a lot of wrong things on it. If it goes wrong, you just close the app and start over again. Um, of, and it'll give you the level. Uh, and then the third part, of course, is, is the downtime. And, and um, some of those aspects is that if there is downtime, they need support. And then for that, as, as we in Unicontrol have we really tried to make it simple for our distributors, such as uh, Matt and, and, and Servitech and the others around the world, to give that support as easy as possible, that they can log on onto the tablet, that they can get into it, see what's happening, uh, maybe even turn on the camera on the tablet on and see what's going on out there, uh, just as as, pa as Patrick was onto it, see that the data, see it on the cloud, and really make it easy and simple. I hope that there's a little bit different perspective in, in it. Um, in in terms of of the data, we um, when this this is this aspect of not adding to the to the noise. Um, so when we started this year, we wanted to be as seamless as possible. I mean, we are in a digital area. Almost everyone have a phone and they have internet connectivity. So why should you still go out with a USB stick and put drawings in? It's connected to the cloud. The data is in there. You send the agnostic data and everything else. So you just take the drawings in the right format, put in the right uh, in the right folder in the cloud, and then it's instantly in the machine where the operator can choose which projects he wants to work with. And he can also update. Uh, in, in, in the office, the, um, the the drawings can also be updated as well. And if, let's say if your surveyor or your engineer doesn't have a, an access to your cloud, he can send on an email and it is an Android tablet. So you can actually have your email on the tablet and just put it through there as well. To just make it as simple as possible. As long as you either get it on an email as well, you can just put it in the right hole and log in on the tablet. It's an Android piece mm. of uh, I, hardware. I, I think at least it's a screen. really, really great aspect of it that the, the cloud connectivity means that it gives companies space to grow you know they can have an engineer yeah. overseeing a few few different jobs and they can allocate drawings based on when they come and they're updated i think this is something uh you've fed back to me before pat is you know the the architect comes out with another drawing and then you need to just get that out there and it it it's pretty seamless I, I, um and and you know it's the advantage of having that android um interface and and from a mm. support perspective it also means that we can use team viewer to dial in and um and and actually work with with control of the tablet rather than sort of when you're on the phone and saying oh can you press the button on the left it it just it just works works much better um so next question is again to pat um we've got uh an engine gone tilt rotation hitch on a Komatsu 138 with smart construction GPS, but it can't map where the bucket is when tilting. How does your system uh, map your EngCon hitch? Yeah, so uh, both of our machines have got EngCon tilt retires. Um, with the EngCon, you have to have the EPS um, install on the um, EngCon, and then the when you have the uh, unit control uh, fitted, that will then, um, like, you know, match up with the EPS system on the MCON. So it's all connected as one. Um, if you don't have the EPS system on the MCON, then yeah, yeah, it, it can't, it won't work. You have to have that on. Um, it is an optional extra with MCON, um, or you can get. Um, you can get guys out to actually fit the EPS on the Incon. Um, so yeah, if you haven't got if you haven't got the EPS on the Incon, it won't it won't work. Um, yeah, we, we've we've been um, we've been partnering closely with a, um, a company called Arbgear who um, fit both the your uh, 
EPS systems. Um, and uh, I, I guess the the best answer to does it track well is uh, just just watch Pat's uh, <laughs> Instagram. You can see it. He's, da he's dancing see, around. Uh, yeah, you can yeah. see on one of our videos, uh, kind of zoom in um, while while the income's rotating and the screen's rotating at the same time. So it definitely uh, it definitely works. <laughs> yeah, I think then, your your screen when you shared it, Patrick, it it, it had a little bit lag, but it's it's very smooth and it's almost instantly. Uh, there's a rotation sensor where the EPS kit is, and it's just a prolongation of all the other sensors we have, and we can read the rotation out of that. Yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not adding any, I'm not adding any anyway, so. Um, one, yeah. one more uh, specific question for you, Pat, is do you look at contours all the time as opposed to surface or XML view? Um, I prefer to look at the contours um, because I know which, I know how much each contour is. So each contour is 250 mil. Um, so if I'm passing through them contours, I kind of know roughly, I know it's given me um, heights anyway, but I prefer to look at the lines. Um, just also as well, the, uh, if I get if I get a drawing from an architect on paper, that's exactly what it would look like on paper on my screen. So before I used machine control, I was always looking at the paper um, architect drawings. So it was always line work. So I'm used to doing that um, line work from paper to screen. So I just keep it as you see in the, in the video. That's that's how I keep it all the time. And you know that's um, a great point. You you can you can uh, make the system work uh, how you you want it to um, and how you're used to working. Um, so we're 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 three minutes from the end. Um, so uh, there's. One more question is, um, you know, uh, where we see the technology going and what we'd like to see. Um, I guess maybe that's that's something for you, Ethan. Um, yeah, I could do that. Um, thank you. But maybe I just, I mean, there was a question about the uh, uh, as-built material that you can download from the cloud. Oh, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course you can do that. Uh, you can filter it through your machines if you have on a job site, four or five machines. You can filter through them. You can filter through the points that you have or lines you have drawn. So you can really have it specific and they're doing a timeline. So it's all possible. There is no uh, nothing in there. It should be able to be done quite easily and neatly. Um, and it's yeah, something just, that, I think I think we missed that a little bit. Yeah, we we you know we're catching up with a bit in the UK is documentation yeah. of, of of as built using the excavators. And I think yeah. in in Scandinavia, every time you dig the road, you have to document it, right? Yeah. Exactly, it, and it's it's it's, it's kind of like a <laughs> you you can't you can't dig without having permission and them knowing where it is so you can find it next time uh, when something happens or understand the levels and everything. Also, when it's sewers and cables and, and whatever otherwise as well. Um, but just about the future, I think uh, when we are looking into into this perspective, is that I think I touched a little bit based upon it earlier. Is that automat one aspect is in, in machine control is coming. I mean, this is uh, this is going to be there, and then and I know you can see Encon. Uh, we we just talk about as a good example in um, in Scandinavia. Generally, I think above ninety percent of all the machines have an Encon hitch, and even those with five ton and two ton machines, because it is a piece of technology that really allows you to be more efficient with with what you're doing. And then on top of that, that is what machine control does as well. So we see that is going to come, and and um, and it's going to be a push from governments and the big contractors and so on as well because they can see the value of it. Also, long term, so for instance, in two year or three year, when something happens on that road you build, you can actually find where the sewer is and not guess where it is, and then you hit it. Um, then the other aspect is also that automation in terms of, I mean, semi or autonomous machines are quite far ahead in the future, and I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, but if you look at it in, in, in a different perspective, if you see in a car manufacturing perspective of how much that have developed, and you look in the construction side, which is exactly almost the same, but the machines have become much better, then it's digitalizing that is where we are going. And, and we may have semi-automatic solutions, or it's already on the market, 
where uh, with the dozer you can actually you know just control the speed and so on then it, it uh, the blade is controlled by the machine itself and it's following the direction that's what's going to happen with excavators and so on the market but it's a little bit expensive and you can also see with with our i mean we are quite affordable compared to the others in the market that the price of technology is also going a different direction so more people and more countries and more we democratize that technology and make it available for way more people on that market and i think that's where we're headed and at the end of the day this is going gps on excavators or or any everything machinery i the, the future i see is i think this example i've been used quite a lot of time is going to be like a gps and cars yeah yeah i think i think that's um that's a a, a great one to uh to end on um you know machine control is coming um it, it eventually will be just like having gps and uh, sat nav in cars um and you as a company need to be ready for that if you're if you're thinking about adopting it um pat obviously is ready he's he's adopted so we're very pleased with that Eason is uh ready and in fact coming up with more solutions by the day um from his little cab i ho <laughs> i hope you only drive around <laughs> at an excavator um, just to promote the brand yeah, well, it is i mean if i can show it to you here you can see that there is just a sensor from uni control headed here in the machine and and you know and, and there's the antenna you can even see that behind yeah, you can, uh, yeah. where you get the signals and so on so so yeah well um with that we're up to the hour and um uh, i'd you know, thank you so much, guys, for uh, making time in your your super busy schedules. Um, and um, I think I think we've really got through uh, all of it. And and thank thank you everyone um, for the, the the questions. I'm afraid um, we haven't quite got round to all of them, but we'll we'll try and um, uh, pass the unanswered questions on to the speakers afterwards. Um, and um, yeah, um, please do join us for our next webinar um, on structural health monitoring, GPR, remote sensing, uh, total station monitoring. Um, and if you need more information, um, just drop us an email, um, info at survey-tech.co.uk. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank my speakers, Pat Quinn of P. Quinn Construction. Please do follow him on Instagram. Everyone else does. And uh, Ethan <laughs> Eckler of UD Control. Um, fantastic products are available of course through survey tech thanks very much and um we'll see you at the next one thank you Matthew. thank you thank you